Hello, and welcome back to Group 5's project, Baby Characteristics Generator. We've made a lot of changes since the first iteration. Firstly, we've completely redesigned our project to make it more object-oriented. This includes a brand new class diagram. So to recap, our project takes the characteristics of a mother and a father and generates the likelihood of a child having those characteristics too. The characteristics we chose were hair color, eye color, cheek dimples, and height. In this presentation, you will get a preview into our redesign and see the app up and running. So let's take a minute and watch a quick demo. Okay, hello, I'm Sharpan Shah. I'm going to show you how our application works. Now start from the older version, which is uh, command line application. Blue, brown, you probably seen this before, so I will go through this quickly. Black and red. No. <clears throat> so it's loaded and correctly shows the possibility of each characteristic of the baby. Now, if I type quick. For the newest version, we have added the GUI on it. So run this. See, there's a pop-up. Says baby generator, and uh, there are three pie charts, which demonstrate possibility of eye color, possibility of hair color, and the possibility of dimples. Now you can see the several options. In. We have uh, choice boxes here, so I will run this next one. Okay, what if we put impossible data? I mean, what if the dad and the mom are one centimeter high? That's pretty much impossible, right? And we submit, it says invalid, and the state this down which it press row up an indicator and since brown is a dominant gene then the brown occupies the whole pie chart for the hair, hair color red and black they are not dominant genes so red and black share the same possibility now dimples no and yes then the child will have possibility that he or she has dimples and have chance that he or she will not have dimples so the height is invalid now let's change to one okay one eighty gray and brown And uh, <clears throat> let's see if something will change. Submit. You can see that since parents both have uh, grey uh, eyes, so the baby would have grey eyes. And uh, for brown, apparently, it only buys the whole pie chart. But yes, yeah. If both parents have dimples, then a child must have dimples. What if I put this the number and I clear this if I want it? See, the indicator says cleared. Now, the last button is quit. If I click on it, the program the end. So, that's basically about our application. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day. Hey guys, I'll be going over the class diagram. We have a total of six classes that collectively work together for this GUI application that determines the characteristics of a baby. They are the mother class, father class, child class, person class, app class, and the app controller class. 
the mother, father, and child class, extended the person class, and were very similar in the sense that all of its objective was to take the different attributes such as hair color, eye color, dimple, and height from person class, and to set it for each father, mother, and child classes. Which brings me to the person class. This class uses a series of getters and setters to update the value of the variable that represents the traits when a user enters the traits and returns it using the getters so that the information is accessible. The view controller class is where the connection between code and GUI happens. This is where we assigned different widgets such as labels, choice boxes, and pie charts on our scene builder with our code. This class gets all the values put in by the user, user using getters. We then implemented a series of if statements to determine the dominant trait. This class also sets and initializes the pie charts. It is initialized through for loops that loop through each characteristic name and refers to the code that sets the dominance of that name or trait. There were many challenges for each member while working on and completing the final iteration of our project, Xiao Huan's challenge. My challenge was to create the structure of the whole application. For example, how each class cooperates together and what methods need to be added in the corresponding class. Carlene's challenge. I struggled understanding how the GUI interacted with the code that we wrote. Thankfully, our group was able to spend more time on assignment two, and I was able to gain a little more experience creating the GUI. We were able to repurpose parts of our assignment, and that helped a lot with our final iteration, I think. Hema's challenge. I was in the same boat as Carlene in the beginning of assignment two. I felt I was missing some important concept that connects the code to GUI. I was more than grateful for the TAs for helping and actually explaining the reason why things worked. I'm still learning, however, and had a few hiccups along the way, but my team was able to assist and help teach me. In terms of what we learned, our group had some overlapping ones. We discussed among the team and one thing we learned collectively was definitely linking the GUI with the controller or our code. All of us struggled with that during assignment two, so that assignment for sure paved the way for us for this project. Another thing we all learned was the importance of object-oriented design in terms of efficiency and organization with the help of the feedback we received from our first iteration. It made us think in a different way altogether and really helped understand the purpose of each class. All the members definitely appreciated that we could gain knowledge from discussing with each other as well when we were stuck. Which brings me to talk about how we learned the importance of teamwork and proper communication. We used different platforms to communicate and understood that time commitment is crucial, especially when it comes to team projects. There was a lot of work for us to do to get our project working. We started with a good text-based application, but it wasn't object-oriented. This made us take a step back and look at how we could redesign what we already had. We started with three classes, input, output, and disposal. From these, we were able to get mother, father, child, person, app, and the app controller, a much better design. Writing these classes was the easy part for us, but linking them with the GUI was a major challenge. We were not prepared during iteration two to start this process. So we spent some more time with assignment two to gain a stronger understanding of how everything works together. Although it was a struggle for each of us, it was time well spent. And I think we gained invaluable experience that we were able to use for the final iteration of the project. After getting each class written, we spent many hours together over Discord chatting and creating the GUI. When one part of the application worked, something else would stop working. There was a lot of trial and error in the process, but in the end, we were able to get everything running smoothly. We ended up recycling some of our ideas from assignment two and using them for the project, like using choice boxes and pie charts. These are options we may not have considered if we hadn't worked so hard on assignment two. We had many high hopes for the final iteration of the project. And I think despite the challenges, we created an interesting application. One of our earliest struggles 
was deciding how we would incorporate dominant and recessive genes. I'm pleased to say that we were able in our project to take these into consideration. From Xiaohuan, Hima, and myself, thank you for watching our presentation and sharing this experience with us.